The last video generated so many great comments, the best way I figured to follow it up was with another video. So let's jump into it. Welcome to this episode of Bench Talk by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to follow up some of the questions that I received from the first video on creating super strong parts. Seems everyone stopped the video after the first tip being layer height and pointed me to Stefan's um, video over at CNC Kitchens about layer height. And unfortunately, I think what was missed, or maybe I didn't do a very good job in that first video of explaining that that was only one ingredient of a recipe. And so the complete recipe was obviously layer height, over extrusion, temperature, and printing surface layers. So the end result, unlike what Stefan was doing, is a solid piece of plastic, not a standard 3D printed infilled object. So here I have another one, and if I try to break it, I'm putting an enormous amount of pressure on this right now, and I can't break it. This is almost equivalent to a piece of cast acrylic because it has 31 surface layers printed at 0.3 a layer height at, a, at, a, at, at 5 degrees over and over extruded by 5%. So there are zero voids in this. Now, as I pointed out in the first video, the reason that I use surface layers is I do not want infill voids. And that is what infill does. Even at 100%, you run the risk of voids in your model. And I did not want that. Because as in my first video, I had these guys. And you can see they're taking a lot of weight between supporting all these, the, both of these motors and a platform, it needs to be super rigid. And these are also solid pieces of plastic. So that was the idea of the first video. How do you create a super solid part, not which layer height is best? So I think a lot of people got confused in mixed apples and oranges, or I didn't do a good enough job, or I didn't do a proper job up front of explaining that and, and covered it at the end. So I hope you get the idea that the video was about how to create a super solid part, basically a solid part here because this piece has no infill. So I'd like to talk a little bit about Stefan's findings in the second part. So layer height is a trade-off of strength and resolution versus print time. So the, the larger the nozzle, obviously the less resolution you're gonna have, uh, but you're going to print faster and layer height will also, because it's a function of the nozzle diameter, play a part in the strength of the uh, model itself. Because what's going to happen is at 0.5 layer height with a 0.40 millimeter nozzle, you're going to have about 73% compression versus at 0.3 millimeters on a 0.40 nozzle, you're going to have about 25% compression. So as you can see from the simple math, the, the, the narrower or the smaller layers will be compressed together with more force and so therefore more sticky. Now, again, in that recipe, those were his results. What would his results have been if he would have over extruded it, turned up the temperature, added other variables? So it is definitely a good reference model to be used with inside of just normal 3D printing is if you want a part to be more resilient along the layer lines, print with a smaller layer line. Now, in, the, in my former life, I used to do finite engineering. Well, actually, I used to write software for finite engineering. And so actually determining failure modes is very, very complex. So it's hard to simply say that that is the one answer to all. But it is a good reference point, and he did do a very good video on it. So with that being said, hopefully this clears up a few pieces on this and solidifies a few things, pun intended. And with that, Swag Shop will be up there. Subscribe's over there. And hey, hit me up in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys. Cheers and see you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.